Lifetime only a 125 hitter off Justin Verlander. The first pitch. And the pitch taken for a strike by Borges. Well, against this guy in this situation, Gary, you've got to go with the changeup. Now Avila sets up. Swing sits this one pretty well. Deep right center. Bosch is there. The dive, and he's got it. What a catch. Had to lay himself out, but he comes away with it. Well, the key isn't the catch at the end. The key is first step. He got a great jump on it, and that's what allowed him to run it down. So with one away, it'll be Eric Ibar. Flew out last time. Here's the first pitch. And Verlander has him 0-1 with that called strike. Verlander just oozing confidence right now out there. It's, I tell you, the consistency is starting to show he believes. How's he been getting strikes? Let's take a look at his approach today. Well, what stands out is when he's been most successful is when he's hitting the inside and outside corners of the plate. He's keeping the ball out of the middle, and that's the way you have success in this league. That's exactly it. Keep the ball out of the center of the plate, make it difficult for the hitter to center the ball on the back. Fastball got him two down. You've got to have better plate discipline than that. With two strikes, you need to be defensive and try to make contact. But when you get a fastball, you need to read whether it's a strike or not. Two outs in the box. Bobby Abreu. He's got a 292 average when going up against Justin Verlander. Here's the delivery. Outside as Abreu takes it for a ball. How's he using the strike zone to his advantage? Here's a quick look at how he's been mixing locations. A one look at inside edge and you can see, compared to what he normally does, he's missed more than his fair share trying to go outside. He's leaving too many pitches up where the hitter can see the ball well or it's out of the zone. He needs to target the bottom half of the zone much more frequently. One one pitch. Strike one two. one pitch is a circle change that hits the target. One and two. Well, the change up right there hit a good spot. You want to keep that down in the zone, so even if they swing at it, it stays in the ballpark. You're Bobby Abreu has struck out a big swing and a miss, and nothing across here in this half of the inning. The Angels 2, Detroit 1. Bottom 3, do up next. Sun shining here at Comerica Park, here in Detroit, a great view of the city from this yard. And it's Johnny Peralta in the box now. There's a strike from Wilson taking the count to 1. Steve, let's take a look at his pitching performance. You, know, you change the hitter's eye level, you move the ball around, and he just cannot catch up to that high pitch. And they're just underneath oh. everything here. You get a lot of fly ball outs. Ooh, tough to lay off there, but it's two and one. Two one pitch. 
Now Peralta, the 3-1 count. He deals. That misses ball four. The potential tying run on base. A good discipline by the hitter to lay off the high pitch and take his base. That'll bring Delman Young up. Well, Delman Young has the skill and athleticism to be a superstar. And once he puts it all together, you're going to see him reach that status. He had already driven in 100 runs in his career. I think he has the ability to be a 30 homer guy also. Oh, Gary, that walk right there is the tying run in this game. That's not how you want to make the opposition do it. Make them earn it. On the way. Swing and a miss and a ball inside for strike one. Steve, he knows he's really got a pitch now. He's put himself in a situation where he's really bought pressure on himself. Uh, you know, these are the type of innings you get really big on you right here. It's about damage control. I know you put the tying run out, but you've got to bear down right here. And that's high, one and two. Now, let's take a moment to see how this pitcher has been mixing up his pitches. John, Steve, what do you think about how he's done? Pretty impressive stuff, the way he's been pounding this strike zone. It's an indication of the performance we're seeing from him. You don't have success without good use of mixing locations. You know, John, I agree. I think that he's kept hitters off balance. Every once in a while, I don't like the pitch selection, but he's executed that pitch even when it was the wrong one. That's a pretty fast pitch right there, and hard to get that much break on it. It's Rayburn at the plate. But with the way he's come alive after the break the last few years, Ryan Rayburn is making a name for himself as a second-half hitter. He always plays well after the All-Star break. Peralta's on at first base. Now the first pitch. He watches Wilson's pitch go by. It is interesting, John, that Rayburn's numbers career post-All-Star game are very good, but it's the front half of the year that gets to him. Yeah, and that's the thing that Jim Leland hopes to get out of him in 2012 is that consistent full season. Fortunately for him and his teammates, the playoffs are after the All-Star break, and he was solid for the Tigers last year in October with a couple home runs in the ALCS. Hit sharply towards the hole. Gets one at second. And that's two. A double play. No runs, no hits. Nobody crossed the plate in this half inning, and nobody left on base. The Angels still enjoying this lead. 